Hi all, this is Corey from Alpenglow Basin Fiber Arts. In this video, I want to teach you how to make my favorite crochet headband. I wanted to insert some footage here of a trip that my family and I took to the amazing Bryce Canyon. It was really windy and cold the day we went hiking and I wore a headband just like the one I'm going to show you here today. It was just what I needed. It was so cold there. All right, to make this headband, you'll need some yarn, a pair of scissors, a crochet hook. This is a five millimeter Susan Bates hook, my favorite, a yarn needle, and a tape measure. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing, liking, all the things, and let's get started. Starting out with a slip knot, I'm going to use uh, a, a, a yarn here from Lion Brand. It's actually called Lazy Days. And this yarn is so nice for demonstrating stitches because as you can see, there is no fuzz. It's a chainette construction and it works really well for demonstrating. To start, place your slip knot on your hook and I'm going to chain out 10. Nine and 10. Okay, and from here, we're going to just place a normal single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So this is the first chain, this is the second chain. And it's important in this stitch that you actually work in the back bumps so on the back side of those V's, you want to put your stitches right in those back bumps. And I'll meet you back at the end of the row. All right, putting my last single crochet stitch, and I have a total of nine stitches. Okay, so now we're going to turn and I don't put a chain in. I don't like the way that it makes the edge look. So I turn without chaining. And now the idea is to insert your hook back through the back loop only. So if this is the V, we're going to insert in the back loop only of our stitch. And then we're going to reach down to the chain below and we're going to grab that loop that's closest to us from the chain below. Okay, that's how it looks. And then we're just going to yarn over, pull through to pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. And basically you're making a single crochet, but you're inserting through the back loop of the stitch that you would normally work in, as well as the loop from the chain below. And completing out that single crochet. Do it one more time. So I've got the, the V here. So here's the back loop of that. And there's the chain below. Back loop, chain below, and complete the single crochet. Okay, so I'm going to keep going and I'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay, I am getting to the end of the row, having a little trouble getting into that stitch. And I want to count my stitches now because I think I've got one more. So let's count them. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, so I need nine stitches. So I've got one more stitch and one more chain to go through here. And pull up that loop and close it off with a single crochet. Okay, so that is the first row. And to be honest with you, the first row is the hardest row. Once you're finished with that, it gets way easier because those loops are a lot easier to see. So again, I'm gonna turn and I'm not going to 
chain. I'm just going to turn, and you can see now I've got my loop, my back loop. Here's my V, here's my back loop, and then there's the stitch below. And you can see I'm matching up all the way down the stretch of the row. I am going to meet back up with you at the end because it does get a little harder to see where you need to go for those last two uh, loops in that last stitch. Okay, so I'm going to start here with stitch number one, number two, and I'll meet you at the end of the row. All right, I've got two more stitches here at the end of the row. This one's pretty easy. You can see the back loop there and then the stitch, the available loop from the stitch or the row below. And now we're at the end. So I've got my last stitch and you can see that the, that the back loop has kind of gotten buried. So you kind of got to dig it out a little bit to get to it. Okay. And then this is just that available stitch from the row below. So it's not real hard but it's just something you have to be aware of on that last stitch because we're not doing a chain one and turn. It can get a little bit buried in there and we'll look at the next row here. Oh, I just chained after I said I wasn't gonna do it. Okay, there we go. We're in the last stitch. We just completed the ninth stitch. So we're gonna turn, no chain. And I want you to look here. So again, we've got our Vs. And we'll go through there and then the available loop from the stitch below all the way across until we get to the end. And you can see here again that back loop of that last stitch is sort of buried in there. So you got to dig it out and then catch this loop and you're good to go. And that's the only trick to it is to make sure you get that last loop that gets kind of buried underneath the stitch from the row below. And that's it. All right, I've completed a nice long strip of thermal stitch. This is a nice one row repeat, easy peasy. Here's the result. Mine measures a little over 19 inches, and I'd like to show you how to make this into a headband. When you're making a headband, you wanna have about three inches or so less than the circumference of your head. And the reason for that is you this will stretch. You can see that stretches quite a bit. Um, and you want the headband to be nice and snug. You don't want it slipping off your head. I'm right here at my last stitch in the project. And I'm going to chain one, pull up a long tail, because we're gonna use this tail to do some sewing. That should be plenty. That's about 10 or 12 inches. I should have plenty and enough to, uh, to weave in my ends. All right. I want to show you how we're going to construct this headband. So basically, um, I like to take a look at my work to see if I like one side better, better than the other. I made a little join here when I ran out of yarn and started a new yarn, so I think I want that on the inside of the headband. So I'm going to put that on the outside now, and then I'm going to bring the ends together, and I'm going to squeeze them together like this, okay? And then I'm just going to open them up and join them, actually the other way. I'm going to join them together here so that you get what looks like the shape of an S, okay? And you may have seen this before. It's a fairly popular way to make a join for a really cool headband. So that's where we're gonna start. And I'm going to thread my yarn needle. And then I am simply going to use this tail and Just go with a whip stitch, catching all of the layers. I think I've lost one here. Pull that one up a bit. I'm gonna make sure I get through 
all the layers of the S. Just one, two, and just basically sew across the S so that you get everything nice and secure, making sure you get all those layers in there. This is the tail from the beginning. All right, so I'm down to my last stitch here of the seam, pulling it nice and tight. And I'm just going to go through one more time here and create a bit of a knot going back through my yarn, pulling that nice and tight one more time. Okay. And that's it. I'm going to weave these ends in later, but I want to show you the finished result. So now if I turn this the other way, inside out or right side out, I guess, here's what you get. So you get this nice little knot that you can put underneath the back of your neck so that it's uh, wide, a wide headband on the top and, and has a nice narrow gather in the back. Or you can put this right on top of your head and it makes kind of a cute gather right there. Um, this, this stitch is really good for keeping out the wind and the cold. I keep one of these headbands in my, um, in my purse and in my backpack when I go hiking all the time because I just never know when in the mountains when there's going to be a cold breeze. It can happen any month out of the year. And I get earaches when I get really cold winds going through my ears. So um, this is super handy to keep around. It packs up nice and small, and I hope you enjoy making one of these headbands for yourself. Have a great day.